Okay, so in this video, we're going to install Puppet Server 6 on Ubuntu 18.04. Now, keep in mind, this is Puppet Server 6 Community Edition. This is not Puppet Enterprise, which includes a GUI. This one does not have a GUI. It's just command line only. In my environment here for this video, I'm running two VMs in VMware Workstation, but you could use VirtualBox as well. And I installed Ubuntu 18.04.03, I think, server. And no GUI, but I, when I did the install, I set static addresses for each of the instances. You can see here in my diagram, 15.210 uh, and 15.211. And I also made sure that OpenSSH was installed so that I could SSH in using this MT PuTTY. So it's multi-tab PuTTY. So these are literally pup uh, PuTTY instances, but they're tabbed inside of multi-tab PuTTY. So it's a little easier to switch between the two of them. Okay, so um, this is the configuration. I got a Puppet Master and then Puppet Agent. Now, the Puppet Agent or Agents is really just any device that you want to manage with Puppet configurations. So in a, in a small production environment, like a real network, you would have multiple agents. They can be any device, really. Just It has an agent installed. It connects to the master and grabs the configuration manifest modules or whatever you've defined. I've got Puppet DB over here on the side. In this video, we're not going to spin up a Puppet DB, but just know that some of the configuration of the Puppet Master here is going to be uh, remarked out. But it's kind of staging for one of my next videos on using Puppet DB with this Puppet Server config. Uh, let's see here. So I think that's it. So let's get started. So on the Master, what I've done initially before I started this video was I did an apt update, which updates your repository data. And then I did an apt upgrade, which brings all of your packages and kernels and everything all the way up to the uh, highest level. So um, that takes a little bit of time, and it's not tremendous. If you install the latest Ubuntu server, it should be pretty quick. But we're going to get started on the Puppet Master. So the first thing you want to do, um, and also just as a side note, all of this text here that you see on the screen, I'm going to put this into the description of the YouTube video so you can copy-paste it yourself. Um, I've got links here to the pages on Puppet.com where I've got this information from. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the Puppet repositories. This is important because Ubuntu actually has Puppet server and agent in its own repositories, but those are not the releases I want to use. I want to use the latest straight from Puppet, not the ones that are in package and put into the Ubuntu repository. Obviously, you can use either one you want, but I want to make sure that I get the most recent release um, specific to this environment. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a wget. I'm going to switch over to temp folder and we're going to do a wget and it's going to download this this deb file and this is the repository install. So now we're going to go ahead and run dpackage um, puppet. Uh, actually one thing I wanted to mention though before we get started here is you notice how this has before we continue, right? you notice how this has sudo here in the front. So you could to run any elevated commands you ha in Linux, you have to type sudo. But what I did is I did a sudo s and I switched over to root. So I don't need to include sudo anymore because I'm running everything as root. Some of you Linux guys would probably frown upon that, but that's just how I'm doing it because it's easier than typing sudo all the time. So, um, so basically, what we did is a wget. We got this file. We downloaded it to the temp folder. I am going to go ahead and now install that repository and then the next thing you need to do is apt update and now it's going to go ahead and download these right here you can see it just downloaded these two puppet lads repositories and to install the puppet server from the repository you need to call puppet server so in ubuntu i think it's just called puppet master but since we're going to say apt install puppet server we're going to get the package from the um, puppet labs uh, repository so i'm going to go ahead and copy paste not that not that not that i want Oh my gosh. I want this one. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. And it's going to go ahead and ask me, I'm sure I want to do this. And I'm going to say yes, of course. And it's going to go ahead and download Puppet Server. And you can see right here that it's, it's it, from the repository, it downloaded Puppet Agent from Puppet Labs. Um, it's getting some of the dependencies from Ubuntu repositories. And then you can see here Puppet 6. Downloaded from Puppet Labs, and um, it's currently downloading Puppet Server. That should come from Puppet Labs as well, as soon as it finishes here on my super fast internet. It's almost done. It's almost done. 85, 87, 90. And, oh, man, kind of wanted to see that. A little too fast here. Ah, oh, there you go. It was right there. I can't scroll up because it's currently downloading. Right there, you can see that it got Puppet Labs, Puppet Server. Oh, it was the same line, Puppet 6. 
Okay. Now it's installing it. Uh, it does make a service, so system CTL status puppet server. You can see that there is a service. You can see that it's present and it's currently disabled and it's not running, but we'll cover that in a second. So the next thing I want to do though is I want to edit. So in this, in this private environment here, this is not a production environment again, I need to add static entries in the host file so that these devices can, can communicate with each other. In a real environment, you would put all of this into a DNS server. You wouldn't do it in, in hosts. But for the lab, we're going to do it on the host. So I'm going to go ahead and open that in Vim. Vim is, um, if you're not familiar with Linux, Vim is uh, VI editor. And it's kind of clunky to use if you're not used to it. There's literally, if you're a Windows guy, for certainly it's going to be very confusing to you. But basically, the simple command you're going to want to do is hit I for insert. And now you're into edit mode. And then you can copy paste these. Obviously, edit to your environment. In my, my environment, these are, this, these are the IP addresses for the Puppet DB, which we'll do in a different video, and then the Puppet Master. Um, I added fully qualified domains here. This is one of the domains I own, stopatsmore.com. And so that's the name we're going to use for this example. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those in there. You can see I just dropped them into the Puppet, uh, excuse me, not the Puppet, the host file. I'm going to do a, you just type, in, in the edit mode, insert mode, you just type colon and then WQ for write and quit, and that saves the file. So now that I've got my hosts in there, I've got the correct DNS essentially entries. Um, the next thing I want to do is edit the basic puppet configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and say VI edit, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Puppet Labs, Puppet, Puppet Conf, and in here we've got some basic settings. So it has the basic configuration for a master, you know, example of like where's your code repository, so like the manifest files and stuff like that. Where does all that stuff sit? We're going to go ahead and keep some of that. Um, you can copy paste this whole section here. However, there's already a master there, so I'm really just going to grab the DNS alt names and the main section, copy that piece, and then paste it in here. And you can see I remarked the Puppet DB entries. So we're not using any of those right now. Later when you do Puppet DB, you can just unremark those and they'll be used. DNS alt names, these are the names associated with this Puppet Master. So it's Puppet Master or Puppet. And let's see, the run intervals. One. So it has its own Puppet agent, by the way, and this is it connects to the Puppet Master as well. And that's what these, these particular tags are. So we're going to go ahead and just right quit that now. Save it off. Now we've got our Puppet config. And I want to now start the puppet server it's going to take a little bit of time to do that let me fix this text here it's puppet server not pup not pupper server puppet server and then once that starts uh it's gener so this is a first time run so what the puppet server daemon is doing is it's generating all the files that it needs for the first runs probably things like its certificate store and uh, you know an array of other things i don't know I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what it does. Um, let's go ahead and enable that service so that it runs every time the system starts. So anytime you reboot this host now, Puppet Server is going to automatically start the daemon. I want to do a status again on Puppet Server like I showed you earlier. And you can see now that it is service enabled, vendor present enabled. So it should auto start. Okay, so... Next thing we want to do is switch over to the bin folder for Puppet Labs. So this is the agent for itself. I'm going to go ahead and, and do a Puppet Agent test. And it should this agent should check in with the Puppet Master. And there it goes. Bam. Done. Okay, so the master at this point is probably pretty good to go. We're going to go ahead and now start that same kind of configuration over on the agent. So I'm going to switch over to the agent here. And we're going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to switch to the temp folder. I guess I should add that note there. Don't, thank you. Don't, oh my gosh, I hate autocorrect. Okay, so switch to temp. We're gonna go ahead and download, again, the Puppet repository install file. We're gonna go ahead and drop that package, install that repository. Let me get rid of the pseudo piece here. I'm gonna go ahead and say apt update, which is going to update the repository download files, and we want to do an apt install puppet agent. This should get it from the puppet repository. And you can see that right there. Puppet agents getting downloaded from Puppet Labs. This is exactly what we want. And what we want to do in here, again, back to the DNS thing, we don't have DNS in this, this particular environment. So I'm going to, wow. So that, that literally pressed enter. So I'm going to go ahead and say VI, et cetera, hosts again. We're going to edit the host file. And... 
I'm going to go ahead and I for insert, and then I want to copy paste these lines. These are all the entries potentially used for the Puppet Master. Paste that in there, save it. So now my host file is good. The next thing I want to do is edit the puppet config, just like we did on the master here. So this is the, the agent config. You can see by default, it does not include the master section. So now we're going to go ahead and copy this here and paste that in. So one thing I want to make notice here is that um, the cert name is puppetagent.stopsmore.com. So that's this host. This name should change to whatever this agent is. Uh, not all of them could be puppet agents. So it's whatever the server purpose is. Like if this is a web server, fine. Call that your web server. It needs to match this unique name of this host. And then Puppet Master is, is the master we're using. Um, the run interval is one hour, so the agent should check in every one hour. And then environment is production. So this is the only way in this example that we're targeting systems. I'm telling the Puppet Master when this agent checks in that this is part of the environment production, the production environment. And so when you try to, when it runs and checks in and tries to get manifest files for configuration, it's going to say, hey, I'm production. I need manifest files for the production environment. And I'll show you that in a little bit when we do the, the, man, the first manifest file. So let's go ahead and uh, right quit that. Now I've got that guy going. I'm going to go ahead and, and go over here to, oops, I don't want to copy out. I'm going to CD to opt Puppet Labs, Puppet Bin. This is the, the, uh, rep, the install location for uh, Puppet and Bin is its binary. So I'm going to say Puppet Agent, just like we did on the master. I'm going to say Puppet Agent Test. And what this is going to do is it's going to connect the Puppet uh, master server and it's going to so generates it's so basically puppets communication between agent and master is um, self-signed certificates but it's a mutual config mutual authentication using certificates so the puppet agent's going to communicate with puppet master saying hey this is my certificate the puppet master is going to say hey this is my certificate so the communication between the agent and the master doesn't work until we get the master to sign the agent's certificate so the first test you do, puppet agent test, it's going to try to check into the puppet master, and then it can't, it can't actually make the connection because in the puppet master, we haven't officially signed in a way you could say we haven't officially authorized this host to communicate with the master. So back on the master here, uh, we're going to step out of the puppet folder, and we're going to step into the server folder. I'm going to go to bin, and then I'm going to say puppet server CA list. And this is going to show me all the certificates waiting, requested certificates. So that host did a, uh, a, a CSR, essentially. The puppet agent did a, a certificate request, sent it to the master. The master is a CA in a way. And it is literally, it requested a certificate. Now I need to approve that on the CA. So the puppet server is acting as the CA. I'm going to say, list shows me the certificates waiting to be approved. There's two ways you can do this. You can either say sign dash dash all, and it'll literally sign every single certificate, every single certificate in the requested certificates list. Or you could say cert name, which is might be bad. Maybe you have thousands in there because you got some kind of weird environment where things are requesting certs. It's not necessarily likely. So the all probably works. But if you needed to use cert name, you can literally say cert name, copy paste this cert name like that, and it should sign that one. So now if I do go back and I say puppet server CA list, you can see there's no certificate request available. So now let's go back over here. And if I run puppet agent test again, this test should be successful. Perfect. So I literally have the agent communicating with the puppet master already. Uh, so I stepped over some of this stuff, my bad. Well, it's the same things we, we just typed. Um, next thing we want to do is I'm going to create a very basic manifest. And this manifest is going to install the Apache web server on, um, on the Puppet agent. So what I want to do is open a new tab here. We're going to copy paste that in. And I can show you that I can't currently load, right? This site does not exist. So this is the Puppet agent's IP. It has no web server. It can't load anything. So we're going to close that out. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to make a manifest, a simple manifest called Apache2.pp. That's the manifest extension. And we're going to, um, so let me, let me tab through some of these here so you understand. So remember in the puppet conf for the, mat, for the server, let me do that, cat, et cetera, uh, puppet labs, puppet, uh, yes, puppet.com. You can see in here that I had uh, code dir. So that's where my code file sits. And you can see that right here in my example on the side too, puppet labs code. And remember how we tagged, the agent with environment production, right? So that's basically the st why that structure looks like that. So we're going to say CD, etc., Puppet Labs, tab completing, Puppet code. 
I'm going to I'm going to go here and I'll show you. I've got environments now. In environments I got production. That's the only one. You could create multiple folders here and assign different environments, but we're going to go with production. And then manifests is where the manifest file we're going to create sits. So this is very basic targeting. When you get better at the targeting piece, you're going to use the Hira environment variables and you can um, classify your nodes and everything else. But this is very simple here. So um, what we want to do is a VI Apache2.pp. Now I've got a blank file here. I'm going to say insert and I'm going to copy paste this and I'll explain what it does. So basically what we're going to do here, oops, what we're going to do here is I want to, on, in the manifest, I want to say the, the package, which is like an apt install. So apt install Apache 2 must be present, ensure present. And that'll install Apache 2 using Puppet. And then service, this command here instructs Puppet to say, hey, the Apache 2 service should be running and I want you to enable it. So that forces the service to stay running. You reboot the box. Apache 2 should auto start. So that is literally what's happening in this. I'm installing agent and I'm starting and enabling the service. Right, quit. Got my Apache2.pp file there. And we're going to go ahead and move over to the agent now. And I'm going to say puppet agent test again. And it should go through. And it'll install Apache. Implying configuration takes a little bit longer, right? Because it has some tasks to do now, right? Uh, it's very, very fast. There we go. Look at that. So Apache 2, ensure created. So we can prove this by saying system CTL status Apa uh, Apache 2, I believe. Look at that. Enabled. Enabled. The service enabled and it's running. Actually, I don't know what vendor present works means. Maybe you guys can explain that one in the comments. I think it means it's running or something. I definitely know that it's running because it says started. So, and plus you can see active started and running. So, okay, anyhow. So, basically, what we've done is we've got Apache now running. So, now if I go here again, open a new tab, paste it in there, you can literally see that that puppet agent is now running Apache 2 web server. And that file is under var dub dub, I believe, HTML cat index.html this is literally the content that i just produced right here and i did i did the install of apache 2 using puppet so um if your mind's uh, wandering on that one you i mean the, the power here with puppets amazing because now i can literally i can literally install and configure servers in a standardized and controlled way using puppet so um i hope you guys enjoyed this video that's all I wanted to cover was just basically getting Puppet Master running, getting Puppet Agent running, one basic manifest uh, to install something so you can see that Puppet actually does what it's supposed to do. So if I were to reboot both of these boxes, the Puppet Agent and the Puppet Master automatically auto start using um, a daemon. So there's actually daemons in there, services, if you will. And um, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks.